Hello and welcome to this webinar, Lord of the Flies for years 10 and 11. Today we're looking at Ralph in quotations. We have three key learning aims. We're looking at quotations that really reveal his character and quotations that link to the key themes and ideas of the novel. And we're looking at using subject terminology to analyze some of these quotations. Now, Ralph is a really important character. He is the central character or the protagonist of the novel. And Ralph represents order leadership and civilization. This is an allegorical novel, which means that the writer is using places and people to really represent some really important, deep symbolic ideas. So the first quotation here is near the beginning of the novel when he says, we ought to have more rules, where the conch is, that's a meeting. So Ralph is about order, stability, things that are done in order. Everything has a place and there's a place for everything and he talks about the idea of the conch now the conch is the huge shell that he used to gather the boys together and this really represents the idea of community civilization where and democracy where everyone has a voice and they listen to each other in an orderly manner the next quotation is about when he is a leader starts to get confused and even forgetful. It says a strange thing happened in his head. Something flittered there in front of his mind, like a bat's wing obscuring his idea. Now this metaphor, well, simile, like a bat's wing, is quite sinister. Often when he tries to talk to the boys about making a fire because they've been stranded on this island, this flickering and clouding of his mind kind of comes and it's as if the intention, the purity of his intention is being blocked somehow by his own evil perhaps and the writer really exploring what's going on in the human mind, in the human psyche, even boys who are leaders. And then we have this quotation that says that Ralph too was fighting to get near, to get a handful of that brown vulnerable flesh, the desire to squeeze and hurt was overmastering. So here you can see that despite being someone who's about leadership and law and order, community, democracy, there's a temptation to injure, to harm, to really use his power in an exploitative way. And this, these adjectives, brown and vulnerable, really show that when people have power, there is a temptation to harm. Next quotation, in, quotation is when all of the boys use their power collectively as a group to harm Simon. In fact, they kill Simon. They think he's the beast in their ritualistic tribal dancing. They kill the beast. And Ralph is the one of the first to admit that they have done wrong. He says, that was Simon, that was murder. And you can see the anaphora here, or anaphora, as some people pronounce it, is that emphatic, that was Simon, that was murder. He's, he's accusing himself and really taking full responsibility of his shameful actions. And then when the savagery continues, Ralph admits, I'm frightened of us. I want to go home. Oh God, I want to go home. You can see in this quotation, the monosyllabic nature of these sentences. They're almost elliptical. That means they're almost broken and fragmented. And when he says, oh God, he's this yearning for a higher being, this yearning for a higher order, higher moral standards, because he feels that their civilization, their order, their community, democracy, is falling apart and slipping. Now, we have this rivalry. So being the leader, the chief, also brings with it this element of competition with Jack Meridue. And we have this quotation that says, then there was that indefinable connection between himself and Jack, who therefore would never let him alone. Never. Because Ralph has been in the position of leader. Jack is there as the antithesis. He represents disorder and chaos and disloyalty and totalitarianism. And we've got these two powers, if you like, at war constantly. And that adverb never means that their, their, their rivalry will take everything with them. Next quotation shows that despite representing order and civilization, 
Ralph is forced to fight for his life. Ralph launched himself as like a cat, stabbing, snarling with a spear and the savage doubled up. He's forced to take this position where he's defensive. And that's similarly like a cat, this is primal instinct takes over. And the sibilance, sibilance even, snarling, spear as at the savage shows he's being forced to really live on his wits end and to live on the edge of his nerves. Then we can see this quotation where to, as the whole of the rest of the, the tribe, the gang has ganged up on him, they're trying to burn him out. And so they can't stab him, they can't find him. They're trying to burn the trees to smoke him out. The fools, the fools, the fire must be almost at the fruit tra trees. What would they eat tomorrow? So you can see the repetition of these exclamatory sentences, the fools, the fools. This is almost the omniscient narrator, the intrusive narrator getting involved, but perhaps as the, as the personality of the kind of the third person of Ralph's mind here. The fire here is overtaking and the fire is symbolism here is used to the, the measure of the boy's civil, civilization. When the fire is used for, for cooking and warming things up, it's under control. But when it's raging and it's trying to smoke out this innocent leader, you can see that their barbarism has reached a new height. Finally, let's look at the final quotation. Ralph wept for the end of innocence, the darkness in man's heart and the fall through the air of his true wise friend called Piggy. Here's the end of the novel. The boys are rescued, or are they, by an army officer. They're taken back, if you like, into the idea of war, not the war that they have given themselves, that tribalism, but the war that the adults have created. And he's weeping here, the end of innocence and the darkness in man's heart. Look at the just juxtaposition between innocence and darkness, because both of them has been revealed throughout their time on the island. And here, for once, he's actually finally understanding that his friendship with, with Piggy was, was something that kept him alive. And he understands the true nature of intelligence versus the shape of dictatorial barbarism. I hope you've understood Ralph more through this short webinar. Thank you for joining me and goodbye.